So here at uh, Next to Berlin, uh, you're wearing. Is that your hand? Yes, this is my hand, the extra hand. And uh, so you had a you had a keynote just yes. before. What were you talking about? Yeah, we talked about the uh, human machine cooperation. So like. Uh, going to happen? Is so, it like only for the industry or is it for every human everywhere? No, actually, this is a, a future concept where we demonstrate how humans and machines could work together in the future and probably first we could use it in the industry but maybe later also in, in the consumer. Part. So this is hardware you're making in the... What, what is this? A demo? It's a future concept actually, and I can show you now. I have to, to move to this position, and now you see that this hand on this side moves directly uh, simultaneously to my hand, and also I can move the fingers. There. And you see there are almost all important physiological degrees of freedom, like the thumb here on this side. We have eight double acting actuators, pneumatic actuators. Eight? What do you say? Eight double acti acting pneumatic actuators. So we fill compressed air inside here, and this moves the finger over there. Right? And what I can do now here on this side, I can move here. Uh, I use the webcams to. Uh, orientation. You have to be concentrated. And now, you now picked up. I can feel on this side. I can feel on this side if I grip something over there. So there's a force feedback. Uh, Are you going to be able to put it there? That's, I mean, that's so awesome. I mean, that's completely insane. This is completely insane. Insane. I mean, this is crazy. Uh, I mean, is that what you do every day? You work on these things or? Yes, yes. Actually, I'm an industrial designer and the head of the Bionic corporate team. So we are developing things uh, which you believe that they will be of interest in the field of automation in the next 5 to 20 years. You're the head of Bionic? Corporate Bionic Projects is the Corporate correct. Corporate Bionic Projects. Yes. But is that actually in use or is it only future stuff? Yeah, we think of these topics which we believe that they will be relevant in the future and we do uh, prototypes together with universities and external partners and institutes all over the world to figure out what could be possible in, in terms of robotics or autonomous behavior, adaptivity and so on. Where, where is Festo based? Uh, the main the headquarter is in Esslingen close to Stuttgart but we have 56 um, places in the world where we are located too. Like all over the place? Yes. US, Asia, everywhere? Everywhere. And uh, it's a big company. Yes. How many people? 16,500 employees. They're not all engineers, no? No, no, no. no. no, no. <laughs> but many. Many are engineers. <laughs> many are and engineers. so it's a big company. You have resources. You can do these things. Right? I mean, this is... This is can you talk about the investment for this? No, no. It's significant, no? It's, I mean, there's a lot of work into that. It's a lot of work, actually, but uh, we think there's a lot of outcome uh, with a quite small but very interdisciplinary group. So, in our opinion, uh, it's, it's worth the work. Uh, you know. Has stuff like this been uh, shown before? Is this a uh, new prototype? Or? It's a quite new prototype. We presented it the first time at the Hanover Fair two weeks ago. The first time. And so this is, a, this is a top of uh, the European uh, company, like uh, James Bond. Or what, what is this? Uh, no, no, no. What's the name? Iron Man. Iron Man. <laughs> is that what you're working on? 
No. Are you Iron Man? No, no. no. Just an engineer. <laughs> so uh, it takes a while to take it off, or can, can you talk about this as, at the same time? Uh, it would be nice if my colleague would do this because he's <laughs> more familiar with this than I am. But uh, so. there was cameras inside. Yes, we're uh, using two cameras in this case. The first is located over there, so it's the same perspective like I have here with yeah. my eyes almost. And the other side is, the other one is in the hand here. Alright. So. That's cool. So how soon can we all have this at home? Uh, actually, I don't know at the moment. Because uh, at the moment it's not the main aim to make a, a consumer product out of this. No? no. But people would be, like to have this as, a, as an extension to Skype. You do Skype and then you, you yeah, shake yeah. hands, for real. Yeah. Would be interesting, actually. Yeah, maybe the comes an investor today and <laughs> we can realize this but what we what we are doing first is uh, the rehabilitation of patients who suffered a stroke together with the university medical hospital in, in Tübingen and in this case you combine the extra hand the brain computer interface and this helps the patients to regenerate the damaged connection between the brain and their hand so in a training process we give the patients the signal on a monitor screen to open or close the hand and they have to think that thought and we can measure the activity of the motor cortex in their brain and if we get this measuring the signals then we open or close the hand and doing this in a, in a closed loop training they uh, will be able to uh, move their hands on their own after quite short time and this are we, we are doing first and later on we think about how can we use this artificial hand in, in service robotics because it's a very lightweight, robust, and powerful and also quite cheap hand. So this would be the first steps and actually I don't know if and when it would be available for the consumer market. So uh, if you got billions of euros extra in R&D, uh, you know how to use them? <laughs> you would know what to do? Or? We, we have ideas enough, yes, this yeah. is not a problem. How about so. people that have amputated arms and like they don't have hand working? Yeah. There's a lot of things that maybe... Could be in the future maybe also an application, but actually we are not in prosthetics, it's more a kind of orthotics, so we think in the first step we want to have a kind of assistance system for people who are uh, not not injured or, or have have the stroke as I as I said already in the rehabilitation. So we'll see. So we're here at uh, Festo, and uh, there's this robot arm. What, what's going on here? What is that? Well, this is a robot arm called Bionic Handling Assistant. It uh, uh, was rewarded in 2010 with a Deutsche Zukunftspreis. Um, it's really soft. Uh, it's uh, therefore useful as an assistant for um, people who work, for example, in um, assembly lines at the automotive industry. It's a pilot project yet, but we're testing it in um, those kind of areas. You can, if you touch this, you can see um, it's ha it has a it's it's fingers. It's a gripper called um, fin gripper. Its structure is uh, based on the fish spin, which means it's very adaptive. If, um, let's say, if you want to squeeze so, it. So what do you do there? What's, is this the control panel or...? Well, it's a joystick right now. Joystick? Well, the joystick. See, it's uh, very adaptive and it grips my hand. Um, means that um, a fish yeah? But maybe we can the fish? Start. What? No, 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 hold on. What do you mean with the fish? Are you going to cut it? No, no, cut. What do you mean with the fish? Well, if you open it, a fish, a fish is always, um, a fish spin always yeah. is um, pushing. You see, it's pushing this away. Yeah. It's always pushing back. Um, yeah. If, you know, it's got pressure, it adapts to the pressure. From the point of pressure, it adapts. A regular gripper, it um, goes away like this. So if you if you push like a regular gripper, it, it would go this way. 
the fish spin, it adapts to the point of pressure, like this. So that's why you can use this kind of um, gripper in um, assembly lines where you maybe want to grab some tulip, um, tulips, not to, you know, um, squeeze them too much. So is this like a, just a prototype or is it for real or...? It is, yes, a prototype project. It's gonna go into... is, is that related to that or...? Well, it's... Um, it's, it's just related as of the fact that they are from the same platform called Bionic Learning Network from Festo. Uh, in this platform we uh, are testing new um, uh, topics like uh, how men and machines are going to cooperate in the future. So here you see a exoskeleton hand which um, enables the fingers to, uh, to, to be strengthened and which enables um, the engineer to give the, um, the information to the robot to, to move only by moving its own hand. Then the engineer feels when uh, the robot grabs something, it feels, it's called the force feedback. And, um, what is this? Is this, uh, can I touch this? Is it dangerous? Well, Is actually, I need to ask you to come back later with okay. the engineers. They are going to demonstrate it to you, and um, you can uh, tell it's um, okay. very, very um, interesting. Cool. I'll be back. And uh, they're uh, squeezing the, yeah. the you fruit. Yeah, how, how the fruit uh, is going to be How big is this company, Festo? Festo is, um, has 15... 1,500 uh, employees worldwide and it's gotten turned over uh, in 2011 of 2.1 uh, billion euros. So, so what kind of hardware do you have in here? Well, we have a hardware which consists of some uh, plastic bellows. One can see here is a plastic bellow and that means if we pressurize the system so it is extract and by this is extraction, you see this, the whole trunk can be moved. In summary, we have nine bellows. That means we have nine degree of freedom. And what really happens if I inflate the whole system can be seen here. I push now the joystick maybe yeah. to you. All three together. And what happens? The system really moves. Can close the ripple. And you see it rips in a very adaptive way. And you cannot get away. And so... Uh, is this technology, this design, is very new or it's been around or...? Well, this design is very new, so we presented this for about two years. And uh, with Fraunhofer, it's an um, institute uh, located in Germany, we developed the shape of those actuators. Those actuators are made from our 3D manufacturing uh, uh, process and which comes now to a very flexible structure. Is it something you cannot do in normal manufacturing? It is not possible to uh, produce those trunk in such a compact way. So we integrate the kinematics and we integrate at the same time the actuator. So, is, this is just a prototype, it's not in the market yet, or...? Uh, we, we have one marketplace, so we shrink the whole trunk to maybe 20 or 30 centimeters and put it to our, or onto a mobile platform, which can be well, uh, controlled by a gamepad, it's mainly for um, autodidactic or for the teaching um, interesting. You have it, it, I mean, that's a, an idea or it's already done? No, it's already done. So you have that on the market? We have, not on the market really, but uh, we have some uh, field tests. So we have worldwide a spread of 20 systems and maybe at the end of 2012 we have a really product. And uh, what is going on out there, for example? Is that yes. related or...? This is related. That's our controller. That's our PLC controller and the robotic um, part of that. And that means that those controller controls first with the pressure of each bellow and secondly we measure we got the sensor uh, the, the position of each actuator 
by using here the potential meters, you know you see this, and those controller control the whole unit, the whole gripper, to a defined position. And so it's uh, adapts to how you push it, or no? No, it's very flexible and compliant. Look at this. I can well displace the whole system in a very flexible way. There's some pressure inside. Yes, it cannot burst. pressure inside, and it cannot burst. It cannot. No, no, it's really harm harmless. And that's an interesting point of view that those system can be well. For example, help a handicapped or maybe an elderly um, woman or whatever you want. Or an industrial application, indeed, um, we can help the worker. Maybe to lift a kilogram or something like that and put it to the working place. So there's this cartoon of Fu Futurama and there's a robot. And I think mm -hmm. he has an arm that looks like this. Could be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but it's not a comic here, it's a real life and really, look, it, it really it works. But is it is it expensive? No, it's is not expensive. It's technology? not expensive. It's a very cheap uh, technology. Really? Really? Uh, compared to uh, normal industrial robots, of course. So is this uh, the, f the future of robotic arms? Maybe one of the service robots. Not of the robots. It's not a real industrial robot, uh, like you maybe you know from television or so from the industrial process. But it's a kind of a service robot. So that means those one is not very precise, but it cannot um, hurt anyone. That's that's yeah. that's the point of view. Can you make it precise? Yes, we we put some camera inside. So look at this. We implanted into the gripper a camera. So this camera, look, and sorry, uh, <laughs> this camera um, scan scan now the whole workspace and puts automatically maybe some objects. So it could detect uh, where it is yes, and stuff yes, and be and more precise. Yes, and, and here we because can increase the precise. The because precision. the whole pressure system is quick, it can be quick. And it not so quick, it's not so quick compared to industrial emotions. That's maybe the quickest release, look at this. That's maybe the quickest uh, movement we can do. All right. So. Uh, patented by Festo, or who, who's making this? So we have uh, some license, of course. So we have some um, license with Fraunhofer. It's the institute I mentioned this before in Germany, and of course we have our own uh, resource.